Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Welcome to the news here on Hilal TV. My name is Faraz Patel. Jazakla, thank you so much for staying with us. Now, we're doing news a little bit different today because I think not just myself, not just the guys in our studio, but every South African were either glued to their television sets or were seeing it on social media, the weather, which took control of South Africa. And when I say took control, it really had everyone gripping. It had everyone holding on to whatever warmth that they could get. But especially those that were traveling on the N3 Harrismith route, either if you were going to KwaZulu-Natal or you were coming back from KwaZulu-Natal to the Gauteng province, the snow that had taken effect right over there. It was truly something which many would describe as a phenomenon. But how did we get here? The, given the fact that we are, what's it, nearly towards the end of September, it's supposed to be spring. There's supposed to be sunshine. There's supposed to be blue skies. But that was not the case. Joining me now to discuss this, I'd like to welcome Detlo Honolo Tobela, who is a forecaster and meteorologist at the South African Weather Service. Uh, Detlo Honolo, I see your background. It just speaks about how the weekend was for South Africa. Good day. Thank you so much for joining us. Good afternoon, and thanks for having me. No, it's an absolute pleasure. Detlo Honolo, how did we get here? Yeah, we had some uh, beautiful start to spring and the first of spring we're having fine day with warm temperatures over most parts of the country and then just this weekend we had a cutoff low weather system which is an upper air system that develops but what it did it just brought about a lot of cold air as well as more and more of the dynamical um, weather conditions that resulted in a drop in sea uh, in most much most parts of the southeastern parts it dropped in the sea um, a drop in the freezing level rather that resulted in much more of the colder conditions as well as moisture around the southeastern parts that resulted in snow and it's not just snow that happened we also had some rainfall areas mm -hmm. especially in KwaZulu Natal the eastern Cape as well as the northern parts of the Free State Province now the snow happened due to the cut of low being there but the cut of low was assisted by two systems one a cold front that was east of the country as well as the high pressure system them over the southeastern airs which was pushing a lot of moisture now what you need for snow is a drop in temperatures and a lot of moisture and that's when you see water vapor turning into ice and that's what we saw as snow uh, level warning eight so obviously now uh, a lot of people you know in the, in the social circles we were asking ourselves what is that level uh, is it the highest level or what or how do we get you in terms of that can you give the the viewers an idea of just that number there and the specifications of that uh, warning yeah the orange level eight mm. is the third last warning of just getting to the highest so the highest is 10 then we have nine and the eight is the one the third almost to the last which is a significantly uh, also important as you would imagine the number eight is is closer to 10. so now what happened is that we first issued an orange level six which was a significant impact that we expected with the snow to be disruptive as well as a high likelihood of it happening now once more and more accumulation of snow was still expected and looking at the observations on the ground it resulted in an upgrade to an orange level eight now orange level eight resulted in a severe impact rather than significant change to being significant to being severe with road closures was still expected a lot of people were trapped in the cold I mean we've mentioned or heard of some people dying all mm. through the stress of hypothermia which then was obviously part of the severity of the level turning to eight with the low likelihood of it happening due to the snow as was seen to seize on those days lastly on the Sunday evening so we're still expecting the snow to happen but not as drastic as it would be but the severity of the impact that would happen was greater which is why it resulted in an upgrade to a level eight which was a severe impact that was expected especially in the N3 as you've mentioned 
and R74 in towards KwaZulu Natal, or you going out, especially parts of the western areas covering the Harris Smith area, Lady Smith, and ports around Underberg as well as Bergville. So it was quite severe as what you've seen in the observations on the news. Lekronolo, I spoke to you last year uh, on Hilal TV, and uh, we had snow, but it uh, it wasn't that drastic. It, there was something, yeah. but I think if I stand to be corrected, it was a, a, around a seven. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, maybe you can correct me there. Uh, the level eight, uh, it, from a historical perspective, has South Africa ever experienced something like this before? I mean, in records that we see in around climate change or other climate records that we've had, I wouldn't say climate change. I'd say I'm saying I'm talking about the records from our climate department. We've seen that we've had a snow as like this, I think, decades ago, about 1981 in September. It was in the 10th in around Gauteng, but not as much as what we've seen right now. But we've had snow in 2012 in August. We've had snow in some instances in some areas last uh, last year or so but the depth of what we've seen this it has not been as critical as what we've seen to getting to road closures as what we have experienced in the past weekend so not not as much but we've had quite instances in the past years however for now we it was quite significant and severe as what you've stated as a forecaster of course you know your job is to predict uh, Sometimes, you know, you'll get it 100%. Sometimes you'll get it just below the 100% mark. Yeah. And I know you, you, you have a team with you that, that does the same. Did you by any chance expect it to be this severe? I ask this because I looked at those pictures. I'm sure you did also. And many South Africans. And, and this was something that, again, you know, it, it, there's a historical perspective to it. But there's also one where this is truly a phenomenon and was out of the blue when you come to think of it. Yeah, the severity was expected as it was. I mean, in the media release, we do even mention that we're expecting centimeters of the snow to be between 15 to about 30 centimeters. So you're expecting so much of that what it was anticipated with the system. The models were quite doing well in placing it and also suggesting with what the observations what we had. In terms of forecasting, we saw the system moving further into the country. And the cold was also even expected to stretch about the high, high felt of Mpumalanga and part of Sleet that was expected over the extreme southern parts of Gauteng. So we were definitely expecting such cold conditions with the snow that, has, that was uh, experienced and observed in the past weekend. Yes, it was expected in that way. Hence the media release that was sent mm -hmm. out as well as the warnings that were sent out prior to it happening about three to two days before we saw what happened. Lekla Honola, I want to touch on black snow. Um, so a lot of the discussion was that if there's black snow, it's a no-go for any driver to go ahead and, you know, make a trip, especially in the evening, because, you know, you're not only dealing with, with that time of the, uh, of the day, but you're also dealing with this black snow over here. Talk to us about that and just how severe and dangerous that specific type of snow is. Yeah, I mean, it, remember it covers the roads, mm -hmm. right? And if you are to travel on the road, we know how cars struggle with traveling and even grabbing in terms of the snow on the road. So when the roads are icy, you can't even control the car. And the severity of that is that whether you put a brake on where they accelerate, the car will generally just move because now it's just squeaking all over the snow and the icy roads. So the roads are not actually just tar, it's mainly ice. And now you can't even control the car, but what furthermore, you can't travel further because now the road is all filled with mm -hmm. ice. There is no way to move around. And now that's why it resulted in mountain passes being closed due to that reason. And people were starting to be navigated to on other routes that will be safer to move and propagate rather than these ones so it's quite quite severe in terms of how you need to travel hence why the discussion was mainly about communication saying people should stay at home let's learn to end this conversation yeah in the in in, in the high felt of course um uh, we did get rain, obviously not the, the, the high amounts of rain. I'm talking specifically here in Gauteng. Uh, with regards to that, because, I mean, 
you know, given that you have drought and rain is something that, that is a necessity within this part of the country. Uh, can you maybe give uh, the viewers a forecast or to whether in the next two weeks is South Africa, ex uh, is this part of the country going to be experiencing rain? And the other question, <laughs> are we going to get something like this again? I know it's difficult to forecast even two or three weeks in advance, but could you talk to us about that, please? Yeah, no, I think it's, a, it's quite a, a a question we've got quite a lot mm. in the past weekend. But uh, what I'd say is that in the days to come, starting from today, we will see a pickup in temperatures, especially over the eastern provinces. Mm. It will be warmer over the central parts of the Eastern Cape, Gauteng, parts of the Free State, all the way to KwaZulu-Natal, hot in some areas in the northeastern parts, covering Limpopo. We're seeing temperatures really, really picking up, and we're getting back to spring, and the groove of spring has sprung with the warmer temperatures temperatures over the central and the eastern areas. Now, we're expecting isolated showers and thunder showers over the southern parts, covering parts of the coastline and the southwest coast, all the way to the eastern Cape province, as well as some parts of the central interior, especially southwestern interior, covering the northern Cape, as we're yet to still, still see some isolated showers and thunder showers. Now, from now up until the six days ahead, we're yet to see warm temperatures, fine weather with sunny weather over the northeastern provinces until the seventh day, we we're seeing isolated showers and thunder showers covering KwaZulu Natal, the Eastern Cape, as well as the eastern parts of Gauteng by the seventh day. Now, looking into the seasonal forecast, it's suggesting that we are into we are heading to a weakening stage of La Nina, which then a weakening stage of the end, so moving from neutral to La Nina. Now, with La Nina, you know, we'd expect mm -hmm. above normal rains for the central and the eastern provinces. And this summer, as we're expecting La Nina, we yet to experience more above normal rain as well as more of thunderstorms over the eastern parts. We are definitely heading to summer. So we to see more of severe thunderstorms over the high fells as well as the eastern parts of the country into uh, summer and from spring. And we yet to see more of that. But for the two weeks, we're seeing quite an um, improvement in the weather, less and less of what we've seen as significant. However, should we have another cut of low around the area supported by a high pressure system or cold front, we yet to see more of the cold conditions happening again as well as more of disruptive rain so we had to see what's to happen but for the next coming week we're expecting warm temperatures isolated showers and thunder showers over the south coast spreading to the east coast until the seventh day where we're going to see more of showers and rain mm. over the eastern parts of Gauteng. Uh, that's a good that's good news because for heritage day those brides can definitely come out with the sun coming there let's go no thank you so much uh, for joining us here on uh, news on uh, hilal tv much appreciated mate Thanks for having me. Yeah, absolute pleasure. That's little Honolo Tobela, forecaster and meteorologist at the South African Weather Service. Yeah, well, what we saw this weekend truly was um, something you probably would never see in decades with the amount of centimeters of snow that had come there. Now, after the break, uh, we're going to bring you... Uh, some snippets from the Saudi Arabia National Day that our team went to go ahead and uh, cover. And that'll take us towards the end of news from myself for hospital and the rest of the team in Johannesburg. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.